You remember when the FX9 first came out and all that confusion over the 19.5 volts power input? And yes, Sony, we are all aware that it was just a cheap trick to get rid of your laptop power supplies. Well, thanks to some lovely engineering like this, I'm getting used to it. In fact, I think I might actually prefer it. I know, that's mad. I wasn't always happy. As soon as I ordered the camera, I knew I'd need a V-Lock adapter for the back of it as soon as possible. And I went out and ordered the very first thing I could find. And that was the Hawkwoods VLM FX9. It's this battery plate here. I might have made a mistake. You see, it looks like I might not have been the only person rushing. The design of this looks a bit of a mess. It sticks out further than it should. And these natty little screws on the top don't really suit a 10K camera. It's all a bit bendy, so it rattles when it's handheld. Worst of all, if you put on a battery that isn't fully charged, there doesn't seem to be enough juice to kick the regulator into action, which steps it up to 19.5 volts. And that's a problem. Although, to be fair, Hawkwoods have said they'll replace those units and they'll swap this out with one that works. There is a tiny LED on the top to warn you when the batteries are running low. But if you plug anything into the D-taps, the cables will cover it up and you won't notice it. In fact, putting it on the top is a little odd. You don't really notice it there. If they really wanted to hide it, they could have put it on the opposite side to your head. It has a USB output, which gives you some power and that's useful. But my main problem with this adapter is that if you want to run your camera on the mains unit, say you're doing a long interview, you actually have to unscrew and remove all of this just to be able to plug the mains unit into the back of the camera. Why don't these manufacturers send a couple out to camera operators to try first? I'm here, sitting around all day with nothing to do. I could have tested it for you. And then, as I'm starting to wonder, what should I buy to replace this? I got a call, out of the blue. How good is their timing? The FX9 V-mount plate from Core SWX. And it really does look as though somebody's taken some care over this. It actually matches the back of this camera and blends into the design better than some of the Sony stuff we've been offered. It feels like the body of this adapter has been machined out of a solid piece of metal. So there's no flex on the back of the camera at all. It actually rather neatly covers up the DC input on the back of this camera. But that isn't a major problem in this case because they've also given us a four pin 12 volt XLR input. And this actually matches the normal 12 volt input you get on most Sony Pro cameras, allowing you to use your existing mains units. Happy days. You've also got a couple of D-taps on the top and even some quarter 20 threads so you can mount your accessories into the solid metal and power them at the same time. Now all of these adapters for the FX9, they need to step up the voltage from the 12 to 14 on the camera battery to 19.5 for the camera. And that means they need to use a voltage regulator, which also means that you won't get a proper indication in your viewfinder of the state of the battery because it's always being regulated. This means your camera's gonna read 19.5 or thereabouts in the viewfinder right up until the point at which your battery dies which is a problem because it'll punch a hole in your last file. Now this adapter does have a very bright LED which flashes red when things are getting close and it's in a good position so you do notice it. However, there's another trick that I really do suggest everybody uses and I had to make these rather neat thumb screws to make it work. You see, if you make it easy to remove the back of this from the camera just slightly, there's enough room in there to put the standard BPU35 battery that comes with the camera. So as your VLOC battery runs down and even runs out, you've got a backup. The switchover is seamless. What you see in the viewfinder is the DC input switches to the camera battery. And that gives you plenty of time to sort yourself out with a fresh VLOC. And you can even hot swap your VLOCs without stopping the recording, which is really useful. I've been running with the standard BPU35 battery in here for quite a while. And on average, it lasts me about 
more than two weeks between needing to charge it and just swap it from inside here. So it's not difficult and the flexibility it gives you is actually really good. Core SWX also sent me one of their HyperCore Neo Mini batteries. And the good thing about this, it gives you a really accurate readout of your remaining runtime. And that's really useful on this camera because you're not getting it in the viewfinder. So now you've got three levels of protection. You've got the display on the back tree. You've got an LED which is bright and changes red. And you've got the backup battery inside, giving you an indication in the viewfinder. How many of you have battery anxiety when you know your batteries are getting past their best and you're not sure if they'll reach the end of the shot? Well, I don't have that anymore with this system. I really like the fact that I can run my batteries completely flat, safe in the knowledge that I'm not going to lose a single shot. I'm actually very grateful to Core SWX for sending me this battery plate to try. Not just because of their timing, which was really good, but much more importantly, because of the way it changes the way I feel about this camera. It makes it much more usable, much more friendly, less stressful. And I think it looks very professional as well. And that can't be a bad thing. Thanks for watching.